Rather than trying to sort out the incidents, the rivalries, the perceived insults, etc., wouldn't it be better if these didn't arise in the first place? We're all adults. Although, sometimes you have to wonder about that. Why can't individuals take more responsibility for their own actions and reactions instead of wasting valuable time and energy on intramural feuding? We should be concentrating on beating up our business rivals, not each other. Konnichiwa, and welcome to the Leadership Japan series. I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, president of Dale Kennedy Training Japan, and much more importantly, you are a student of leadership, highly motivated to be the best in your business field. Today's show is brought to you by our public and in-house seminar series. We run two public seminars each month. Some are half days, some are full days. We do popular topics like negotiations, public speaking, time management, etc. So, if you are seeking these types of skill solutions, more tactical solutions, you can host them in house or just send、uh, a couple of people along to our public events. If you have a performance or people challenge in Japan, then maybe we can help you. Contact me at greg.story, G R E G.story. At dalecarnegie.com. You can also access our free white papers, guidebooks, training reports, videos, blogs, newsletters, course information, truckload of stuff over there at our website, japan.dalecarnegie.com. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is shitsure shimas. Shitsure Shimas. Sorry for interrupting you. Shitsure shimas. We might need to break into a conversation, grab someone's attention. So the way we say that is Shitsure shimas. I'm going to be rude. Shitsure shimas. I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry for interrupting you. Shitsure shimas. This is episode number 172, and we are talking about. People are a pain. All of our problems walk on two legs and talk back. Actually, I can't recall when I first came across this expression, but it is true, isn't it? Most business problems can be fixed with more capital, technological breakthroughs, greater efficiencies, patience, and time. People problems, though, are much trickier. An after work drink session erupts into an alcohol fueled shouting match between two colleagues that doesn't end there. The hostilities continue, and now the entire work atmosphere is polluted with the bile between them. The discussion about next year's budget allocation turns nasty as two strong willed leaders start a very public stoush, aiming for some advantage over the other. Frosty relations prevail between these two silos within the firm thereafter, and everyone is involved. An innocuous remark by a colleague causes offence, and now the boss has to deal with complaints about, I can't work with Taro anymore. Rather than trying to sort out the incidents, the rivalries, the perceived insults, etc., wouldn't it be better if these didn't arise in the first place? We are all adults. Although sometimes you have to wonder about that. Why can't individuals take more responsibility for their own actions and reactions instead of wasting valuable time and energy on intramural feuding? We should be concentrating on beating up our business rivals, not each other. Why do these problems arise in the first place? When you think about it, people have not been taught. Any methodology to control their emotions. We had better fix that. Here are six actions for when you get emotionally charged. One, get cerebral. Collect your thoughts and note your emotions. Draft a note or an email really telling the offending party how it really is and why they are an idiot. Don't miss anything. Make sure you give it to them right between the eyes. 
Don't fill in the name and the email address section when writing it and don't send it. Writing it will get all that anger out so you can relax now that it's done. Two, ask for input. Run the situation by someone impartial and ask for honest input. We can often fail to see the woods for the trees when we are too deep in the situation. A third party dose of reality can be helpful to improve our perspective on the issue at hand. Even if it doesn't, just sharing the burden with others gives us some relief. Get physical. No, no, don't punch them out. But get yourself out of there. Take a power walk or go to the gym and burn that anger off, baby. Four, reflect. Look at the situation from their point of view. Think about what you would do if you were under all the pressure they are under or you had to deal with what is facing them. Think about what you said and how that contributed to the escalation of hostilities. Are we each perfect? No. And the sooner we remember that, the better. It will help us to separate our ego from the details of the issue or argument. Five, sleep on it. Review your I'm angry notes or email in the morning. Think about all the more important tasks you have that require you at your best and most energetic. Decide if this is just a total waste of your valuable time or not. If it is, then let it go and work on some concrete projects that will positively advance your business. Six, pick your battles. Make a balanced strategic judgment about whether this is worth getting emotionally charged about. Should you metaphorically duke it out with them or is it better just to take the high ground and move on? So, when things become highly volatile, don't spontaneously combust. Pause and run through this list like an adult. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series and we hope you enjoyed today's show brought to you by the Seminar Series. As mentioned, if you have a performance or people challenge in Japan, then maybe we can help you. Contact me at greg.story, G-R-E-G dot story, S-T-O-R-Y, at dalecarnegie.com. Also to remember to access your Dale Carnegie training, free reports, white papers, guidebooks, training videos, blogs, newsletters, course information, plus a truckload of wonderful stuff over there, go to japan.dalecarnegie.com. 